Councillors, um, thank you all for your comments um, and your contributions. Uh, I, from leading this process, the first thing I'd observe to the community is that every councillor, um, even those who've joined us late in the process, Councillor Hay, has contributed fully, thoughtfully, and um, quite vocally about the issues that we needed to balance and address in this budget. And um, that has added strength to the process. Um, the officers, the CEO and all of his team and the officers uh, who've worked through the number crunching behind the ideas have played an excellent role whilst we've probably challenged them a little bit sometimes with our um, thinking about those issues, they've applied robust process. And I commend um, our council team for those efforts. The challenge that we all faced this year was um, ugly numbers. And everyone's living in a world of ugly numbers. I think um, um, financial upheavals, um, cost of living upheavals, we're all living that um, challenge at this time. And we certainly had a challenge in our deliberations because the option was always to say, let's push some things back um, and go for a small target. And certainly uh, at this time in the electoral cycle, that could have easily been a path to tread. However, it would have been a path that lacked the leadership that the Chamber has shown. It would have been a path that failed future generations and handed on further problems. Um, and the history across very many places in Australia is at both federal, state and local government level is that the failure to step up to the issue of the day and push it down the road is that you leave a bigger problem for someone to have to solve tomorrow. And we already have some of those challenges that we're having to deal with of issues that time and the breakdown of infrastructure are handing to us. So we faced that and I'm glad that whilst we have been circumspect in our deliberations and in what we've included, we have nonetheless tried to step up to avoid the risk of compounding shortfalls. Councillors, you know, and the community probably doesn't have as much visibility there's a process called the um, regional planning, the South East Queensland Regional Plan that's currently underway um, as an update from the prior plan that talks about both the growth expectations on our region but also um, allows us to put forward the case very strongly for the infrastructure support that we need from the state to enable that growth. In prior iterations of the regional plan, that infrastructure support from the state has not been properly forthcoming to support the growth that we are currently dealing with today. And I can assure you and assure the community that this conversation is far more vigorous um, and is uh, nonetheless one that is myself and officers who go into those meetings are quite um, committed and unrelenting in expecting the state to step up properly to the delivery that supports our community because, as was alluded to by Councillor McConnell, indeed, our community has difficulty to provide the level of resourcing to do that on our own. We need our state government to show us that respect as we move forward and we'll continue to carry that fight with um, every opportunity we have um, across that conversation respectfully and within process, but nonetheless to ensure that that support for our growth respects the needs of our community and doesn't foist upon our community the burden of social disruption that comes with growth if you do not manage it well. I was delighted that finally we've been able to do that first community consultation in a proper process for our budgets. It's something I've long desired and some will recall in the past, in the prior term, we tried a version of that with some updates to the communities through a round of consultations to advise about the structure of what was happening with the cost base and the needs of council as a start of that conversation. 
and uh, disappointingly that didn't um, gain the ongoing support. I am confident that this process will <coughs> remain forward not just by legislation but also by desire of this chamber. Getting the right things in a budget is never easy. But what I am pleased about when you look at the investment in our road and bridge and um, to a lesser extent our footpath network, but particularly our road and bridge network, it, the, and other investments such as investment for Water for Wirral, improving the parking, finding parking solutions in the Gallery Walk precinct, these are all about supporting our local communities our local business and economic drivers, whether they be tourism drivers, um, commercial drivers or our agricultural drivers, our road network is an essential <coughs> component of delivering that economic performance and the confidence of that. It's great to see a couple more bridges being upgraded. It's great to have that key investment in our uh, road network along with the ongoing flood recovery. But I am particularly pleased, whilst it might be a small item in this budget, I am delighted to see that we are putting back a biosecurity officer and I expect that we might find we need more in the future. I've witnessed firsthand the impact of invasive species um, de 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 degrading the performance of some of our precious agricultural <coughs> precincts. I've witnessed how it not only makes them unserviceable for the ongoing production of beef, but it also creates a weed base and a seed base that allows then other species to invade. It threatens our biodiversity. It threatens the cornerstone of our economy, which is our always our agriculture and horticultural capability. Councillors, thank you for all your inputs. Thank you for your courage in the conversations and your courage to step up to the budget before us. And I certainly commend our today's budget. Thank you.